Hello, my name is Cecilia Compratori and I'm the owner of the Essential Toolbox. I started using uh, essential oils about five years ago when I couldn't rest through the night and someone suggested I tried lavender. And since then I have become an avid oil user. I use them for things like uh, relief from discomfort, support for anxious feelings, bug bites, head and neck tension, things like that. I use them on myself regularly and my kids, my grandchildren as well. And I've had a lot of success with them. I began, I believed in them so much that I actually became a wellness advocate. And I love sharing the information, the recipes and the blends because it's about the education. The more you know, the better off you are with essential oils. So good evening and welcome to Lemon Essential Oil 101, the how, what, where, when, and why of using lemon essential oil. So the information I'm going to present can help you get started using essential oils. Uh, it can refresh what you already know, or maybe add something to your knowledge base. I love lemon essential oil. It has such a clean, fresh smell, and it's hard to be in a bad mood when you're smelling it and uh, with good cause. And I'll get into that a little bit later. So what are essential oils? They're volatile liquids derived from plant material. It's a fancy way of saying that they evaporate quickly is actually what that is. Uh, to counteract that topically, we mix oils with a carrier oil, such as uh, jojoba oil or coconut oil or avocado oil. It helps uh, reduce that evaporation rate, but it also helps them absorb it into the dermal layer of our skin better. Um, they're natural aromatic compounds, so they smell good. And who doesn't like that? Uh, pure oils are potent. Relief can come from as little as one or two drops. And on the subject of pure oils, please make sure that you know the oils that you are buying, that they are indeed pure. Uh, essential oils are not regulated. And so therefore it's up to each individual company to be responsible for what they put in the bottle. Uh, unfortunately, there was a, an incident not too long ago with a big box store with an aromatic oil and a lot of people got sick and a child died uh, from using, from purchasing and using this essential oil, this aromatic essential oil. And they knew it came from China because when they looked at it later on, they analyzed it in the lab, it had a uh, bacteria in it that was indigenous to um, Asia and not us. So um, please, please, please be careful, know your oils and who you're buying them from. Uh, most pure oils have no shelf life. All essential oils will have an expiration date uh, by law. They have to have it on the bottom of the bottle, but most of them do not degrade after that expiration date. An exception to that is the citrus oils that um, evaporate quickly. So don't make the same mistake I did when I purchased them and stock up on a whole bunch of them, or you're liable to go back and find out that half the bottle's missing. Um, as long as you keep your oils out of the sun, the heat, and you close the lid tightly after you're done using them, they can last for years for you and still be effective. So lemon is grown in areas around the Mediterranean Sea, such as Sicily, as well as Brazil. And it's one of the most popular oils because of its diverse usage and price point. It does a lot of things, and it also is very cost effective. Uh, I always encourage people to get a bottle of it because I can show them a lot of things they can do with it. And because it is, it is cost effective. I'm, I'm all about that. Um, and it's extracted from the rind of the fruit through cold pressing. So they don't even use the fruit. They just use the outside, the rind part. And it takes approximately seven pounds to make a 15 milliliter bottle, which is 250 drops. So that's a, that's a lot of lemons to do that with. So this is the, these are the ways that lemon essential oil can be used, if it can be used aromatically, topically, or internally. Aromatically, uh, you can use it in a diffuser. You can smell from the bottle. I've done that quite a few times. Uh, you can put drops on the shower floor out of the direct spray of the water and have a nice kind of spa experience with them. Uh, you can use a passive diffuser. That's one that doesn't plug in. I've seen coasters and rocks used as passive diffusers. Uh, 
There's also essential oil jewelry. Uh, it's basically a chain with a pendant on it and the pendant will have like a cotton pad in it and you drop a few drops of essential oil in there and you can just lift that up and uh, use that during the day. You can make sprays with essential oils, which is another way to use them aromatically. I like to make different ones and have them in different rooms or you can make your favorite and just keep it in all your rooms. Uh, there's also hot water. You can use essential oils in a bowl of hot water and enjoy the benefits of essential oils while nurturing your skin and your uh, respiratory airway. Uh, you put one to three drops of essential oil in a bowl of hot water and you put a towel over, the, over your head and you just breathe in through your nose breathe out through your mouth and you do that several times. Uh, if you need to take a break, you can take the towel off, take a break, but it's a great way to enjoy the aromatic uh, uses of essential oil. They also have a thing, it's kind of neat, it's called an essential oil inhaler. Um, it looks like a tube and it has a little cap on the end and if you open the cap up, there's a, a cotton wick that pulls out and you actually drop uh, uh, essential oils on the wick, and then you uh, can put the lid back on. You can pull that out during the day and sniff it. And uh, you can use 10 to 15 drops if you're an adult. You can use it for kids, but only over five. And then you want to cut down the uh, amount of drops to like four or eight drops, depending on their age. But that's a great thing to have if you're at work. I've seen them in glass. They're really kind of cool. Um, you could also smell essential oils from your hand. You could put a, a drop or two in your hands and you make a tent with your hands, avoiding your eyes, and you put it over your nose and breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out. I've done that uh, when I've had seasonal issues. I, I do use that one a lot for those because it, it just goes right to the source. Okay, topically, you can use it topically in a rollerball along the forearms your wrists, along the spine, on the belly, on your neck or feet. I use them on my feet a lot because of reflexology points. And also, um, if it's one that I, I'm not particularly liking the smell of, it's a little bit different for me, I might try it there first. Uh, but these, this is the, the, uh, these are really great for kids, the belly and the feet, especially for infants to do that with. Uh, you can take them internally in a zero capsule under the tongue or in a glass of water. A zero capsule is basically an empty capsule. It has a long side and a short side. You separate them, you drop the oils in the long side, put the lid back on and you drink them with a glass of water. Um, you can put them under your tongue. I have done that. Um, I've had several occasions where I've had head tension so bad that you know I've been in a dark room with my eyes shut and it was just awful and remembered that I could use oils under my tongue and, and I use copaiba and frankincense and it worked wonderfully for me. You can also use them in a glass of water. Uh, I use that to actually flavor my water all day when I'm at work. So here's a dilution chart. I do like to show this to people um, when I give classes. Dilution is one of the reasons that using essential oils will not work correctly because you're not diluting um, you know, to the correct percentage for the, the percentile age that, that you have, whether it's a child or an adult. Um, and basically what you're doing is you're looking for what size bottle you're using, a 510 or 30 milliliter, and you're going to look on this chart here. And then you're going to use the guidelines at the bottom. Birth to 12 months is 0.3 to 0.5% dilution. One to five years is 1.5 to 3%. Six to 11 is 1.5 to 5%. 12 to 17 years is 1.5 to 20% dilution. 18 years and older is 1.5% dilution to neat, which is no dilution. And elderly or sensitive skin, 1 to 3% dilution. Daily use, 2 to 5%. Short term, 10 to 25. And local skin or systemic issues, 50% dilution to neat. Okay, and all you're going to do is find the bottle, then you're going to find what you're diluting for. Um, I use this uh, one to five years for my, my grandkids, and it's 1.5 to 3%. And they're, he's the one I use it for, um, he's sensory, actually, and I use, he's four years old. 
Uh, and so I'll usually make him fives or tens. But if I make him a 10, then, you know, I'm going to look for somewhere in between the 1.5 to 3, like the 2%. OK, and then I'm going to use four. So here's my 10 milliliter, 2%, four drops of oil. The remainder is going to be carrier oil. And that seems to work, work well on him. And just remember, these are general guidelines. OK, if you, what you're using is less and it works for you use it that way. Um, we are all different and unique, our bodies, and so are our situations, what we're going through. And so if it works for you, then stay with that. It's, it's, what, it's what your body needs. You don't need more than that. So lemon is great for uh, digestive support. Remember, it's a great surface cleanser. So it can do the, help do the same for your digestive system. And in my attempt to include more water in, in my diet, uh, I've included citrus oils, specifically lemon. I just like the taste of it. It's just fresh and, and refreshing and clean tasting. And it helps me drink more water and it makes the water not taste so boring. Seriously, I don't, water doesn't taste so hot to me. I don't know. So I need all the help I can get, but it helps make it less boring. And then in, in return, I get my proper hydration. So it's a good thing. Uh, it's good for seasonal support along with lavender and lemon, um, and that can be used aromatically, topically, or internally. Um, when seasonal threats are high for me, I oftentimes will have um, my diffuser going with lemon, lavender, and peppermint, and I will be using my rollerball on my feet. And yes, I do use it in my water as well because I, I want as much support and relief as possible. So remember that they have a mood boosting effect. Um, our nose is the only organ that directly, directly connects to our brain. And that's via the olfactory bulb to the limbic system of our brain, which is responsible for mood, emotions, and memory. So that's why when you smell essential oils and other things, you sometimes have that memory flashback. I know I get them. I always get them with my, from my dad when I smell certain things that I smell and I just have, and it's, it's a wonderful thing. And it just brings back this, these, all these wonderful memories. Well, that's how essential oils work. They work in that same way on that same limbic system of your brain. Okay. So aromatic use can have great results. Um, and don't forget, it's also good for immune support as well. So lemon has cleansing and purifying qualities for the air and surfaces. And this is where it comes in for, uh, as a non-toxic cleaner, you can make the sprays, the cleansers, the cleaners. The limonene is the main constituent in lemon and it gives it a natural cleaning power against grease and oil. So it makes it potent, powerful, and effective when you clean. And it's safe to use in your house. There's no chemicals in it. So you can use it around your kids, around the elderly. Uh, it's an alternative to non-toxic cleaners. And it's often said that the air in our homes is dirtier than the air outside. And a lot of it has to do with the use of chemical cleaners in our homes. Um, internal use naturally cleanses the body and aids in digestion. Just like it cleans surfaces, it can do the same thing for you when you use it internally. So, um, and it also has an uplifting aroma, natural mood booster. So lemon can also be used to remove sticker residue. Uh, you can use one to two drops to help with that. I keep a bottle of lemon in my kitchen. And specifically for this purpose, I recycle a lot of glass. And nine times out of 10, the label is not easy to get off. It's usually quite a chore. Um, I often wonder where they come with, up with these glue formulations to put the, the label on with. Because sometimes it's, wow, it's rough. But um, I use a couple of drops of that. And what I'll do, first of all, is I... I kind of soften the glue with some hot water and then I'll use the lemon essential oil on there and get off as much as I can. And it works great for me. I mean, it actually saves me money because I don't have to buy a bottle and I'm saving it out of a landfill. So I'm doing good for my pocketbook as well as for, for the earth. Um, you can add it to a microfiber cloth and clean the surface of your phone. I read a study 
that cell phones can carry up to 10 more, 10 times more bacteria than a toilet seat. I was like, whoa, that's so gross. And then the average person touches their phone 47 times a day. Oof. So to say that our phones need to be cleaned is that's an understatement. So you can add a few drops to a cotton ball and place it in your trash can also to help eliminate odors. I'm sure we've all had that experience where a little piece of something escapes between the trash bag and the trash can and it gets down there and it smells the high heaven. Well, this, that's where lemon can come in with a, with a cotton ball. Uh, you can take it internally with water to help detoxify. It's a great antioxidant and can help soothe an irritated throat and support healthy respiratory function. I sometimes will gargle with, uh, with lemon water. It works wonderfully. So this is a list of non, some non-toxic cleaners that you can make with lemon essential oil. And this is the short list. There's a lot of them. Um, you can make a grill cleaner a powder cleanser, if you like the powder, soap making, glass cleaner, refrigerator and microwave cleaner, all-purpose lemon spray, or soft scrub. Okay, so that's just the short list. There are actually a lot of things you can do with lemon. But do you imagine how much you could save yourself by not having to buy all those things and replace it with some lemon essential oil? So lemon essential oil and emotions, it is a focus support. It can help you be mentally present. It can help dispel confusion and give clarity. And it's great for concentrating while studying. It can assist in releasing feelings of despair and hopelessness by helping to restore feelings of joy and happiness. Remember the mood boosting. And it's great to use with children for study and focus support. So if you have little ones at home and um, you know, they come home and they can't, can't seem to get into what they're doing. This may help them with that as well. These are some companion oils for lemon essential oil. Uh, rosemary smells great with lemon. Dill, peppermint, green mandarin, lemon myrtle, lavender, lime, grapefruit, orange, tangerine. In fact, any of the other citrus oils will go really well with lemon. I love the smell of lemon and rosemary together. That's, that's a, an amazing combination. You could also use it in cooking. So you can use it in spearmint lemonade, marinades for fish. Who doesn't like lemon on fish? Lemon goes great on fish. Rosemary lemon hummus, blueberry lemon muffins, lemon ginger throat drops, apple pie, and lemon broccoli. I know a lot of people who squeeze lemon on their broccoli, so this would be good for them. The only thing I try to tell people if they want to venture into this area is to use the small end of a toothpick when you're putting the essential oils in, because especially citrus oils, they have, they're very thin citrus oils. They're not very viscous. So you have to be careful when you're pouring them. It's very easy to pour out two or three drops. The first time I used a citrus oil, I had a handful <laughs> because I just didn't know. I just, you know, poured it out. But um, yeah, and then you can put in a little bit, a little bit till it's till you like, to your liking, to your taste profile, because you don't want to end up with 10 pounds of rosemary lemon hummus. That would not be a good thing. So how do you know if you can use it, uh, uh, oils internally? You check the label. If you can use it internally, it should say essential oil supplement and supplement facts. If you look at this one, this says essential oil blend. So no, you cannot use that internally. And if you look at this one, it just says essential oil. Again, no, you cannot use that internally. But if you look at this bottle, it's a bottle of frankincense. It says essential oil supplement, supplement facts. Yes, you can use that internally. So that's how you tell. It's that easy. And if it doesn't say essential oil supplement or supplement facts on there, no matter what it is, do not use it internally. It is not made for that. So this is a recipe for this. One of the recipes I was talking about for the soft scrub cleanser. This is super duper easy to make. It make, takes minutes to make. It's three quarters cup rounded a uh, cup of baking soda and a quarter cup of unscented liquid Castile soap. I actually use Dr. Brown, Bronner's soap. I use the uh, the baby 
uh, scent one. It's really unscented. Uh, it has nothing in it. So you can, you can combine things with it and it comes out great. A tablespoon of water, a tablespoon of vinegar, and five to 10 drops of lemon essential oil. So what you want to do is you want to put the baking soda and the Castile soap in a bowl, and you're going to combine them. And then you add the water and you stir it up. And then you add the vinegar and the uh, lemon essential oil. So you should have a soft paste when you're done. And so to use it, you just apply it and let it sit for 10 to 15 minutes. Let it do it. Let it do its thing. And then you scrub and then you uh, wipe clean it with a wet cloth. So you can make in small batches and store in airtight containers. I like to use glass for my uh, essential oil products. Uh, you can use a high density plastic too, like a number one. But I just, I don't know. I just prefer glass myself. I have all those bottles that I recycle. So I have to do something with them, all the jars. So the scrub's also great to use when you're cleaning your kitchen sink or refrigerator. But I always tell people use a test patch first on a small part to make sure the cleanser doesn't adversely affect the surface. I have not had a problem with this myself. However, with the advent of the Boku surfaces that we have in our homes, the porcelain, the stainless, the polished nickel, the chrome, the countertop surface, the Corian, the, the you know, whatever, the granite. We have a lot of different ones. So, you know, don't take a chance. Just test the surface out first. It's It be, will be well worth it to you. And that's my talk on lemon for tonight. And it, this is my card. I am The Essential Toolbox. You can reach me at theessentialtoolbox at aol.com. My phone number is 239-825-3809. I love texting. I work all day, but I do text a lot. And uh, it's, it's texting is great. I have a lot of fun doing it. Uh, I'm a doTERRA wellness advocate. My number is 6125-349. And my website with doTERRA is my.doterra.com slash the essential toolbox. And yes, there are two dots in there. <laughs> you only put one in, you won't find it. Uh, and that's my talk for this evening. If you have any questions later on, whether you're watching this live or recorded, please feel free to reach out to me. I will be more than happy to answer any questions that you have. If you're interested in learning more about getting started, about a kit or a specific oil, um, we can go over all that. And I thank you for coming this evening.